thing uh, people ask so here uh, on this note only i wanted to ask this like you said that uh, rahu k2 if it is in 2a taxes that can be difficult for family or initial part of family life and then we have the fourth house then there's the seventh house so in your experience in general i am asking about any malefics or any planets if they are more prominently badly placed in the seventh house or which of these three houses like second fourth seven that you have seen them harming the marriage especially because many times there is so much in a horoscope that you have to look at okay okay so the second house is more about see the the seventh house is the intimacy with the marriage partner it's going to tell you the nature of the marriage partner ups and downs things like that but the second house is specifically family life so the second house is more about the arguing and the bickering and the ups and downs and things like that so you could have a very very good seventh house and you could have a very good seventh house in the navamsha that means that you get a, a beautiful partner a nice partner you have a strong bond with the partner everything with the partner is good but the second house is bad if the second house is bad even though you love the partner even though there's a good bond with the partner every day you wake up and there's arguments about something it doesn't mean the marriage is bad it doesn't mean you get divorced it means that there's always something to talk about and to work on hey why did you do this why did you do that yeah, i did this i like it this way why did you do it that way so the arguing and the bickering will not destroy a marriage unless the second house is severely bad to be honest most of the times when the second house is really bad like that there tends to be a a, a rough seventh house so they're both working together to harm the marriage but if you have you, um if you have a bad seventh house which is going to cause divorce and bad partners a, a good second house will not fix it the good second house simply means that the on a daily basis the ability to to move smoothly through your life through your family life you're moving smoothly you know without a lot of ups and downs but if the seventh house is bad the partner is bad there's a divorce or the partner's bad or you don't get along so they're they're very very different and then sometimes you have a situation where the navamsha seventh house is the opposite of the seventh house of the natal chart so it, you really have to look at everything um and then the fourth house i take more about the mother and the heart and the home but i'm not if someone asks about married life i'm looking more at the seventh and to some extent the second i'm not looking that much at the fourth yeah and another thing i wanted to ask you here regarding fourth and fifth so there's a uh, sometimes people say now that fifth house is that which makes the person love something because it's the house of love and passion and what you believe will give you happiness and then fourth house is the house of happiness and comfort so many times you see that the fourth house has malefics placed and the fifth house has benefics or it's the opposite the fifth has malefics and the fourth has benefics so on a broad spectrum would you like to comment something that if well i i i do not i would i would not compare the fourth and fifth house at all okay not at all to me to me the fourth house is the heart mm -hmm. it's the heart it's the mother it's the physical heart so if malefics are there the person might have heart problems when they get older if malefics are there they might not be happy if mars is in the fourth they'd be aggressive in the heart if saturn is there they're depressed in the heart if saturn's in the fifth they're depressed in the mind oh. if saturn's in the fourth they're depressed in the heart so let's say that i see a chart where venus and jupiter are in the fourth mm -hmm. and the fifth house is a total wreck yes i can see that the person and i see this all the time where the fourth house and fifth house are very different so if the fourth house has say jupiter moon in the fourth i know the person has happiness in the heart no matter what but if the fifth house has a fall in mercury or some saturn in the fifth or something where they're depressed i tell them i say look do you get depressed they go yes i go okay 
Whenever you get mentally depressed, immediately stop the thinking process and go straight to your heart and see how you're feeling. Because they're always going to feel happy in the heart. Okay. Right? Now, the opposite could also be the truth, uh, could, 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 could be the, the, the case. Some people have Saturn and Cancer in the fourth or something like that, and they're depressed in the heart. But their Mercury and their Moon and their fifth house are positive. Then I say, when you get depressed in the heart, stop feeling so much and go into your intellect like that. Oh. I mean, the fifth house has to do with entertainment and creativity and the mind. Um, but when you say a person, you know, is going to love something, I mean, if Jupiter and Venus and Moon are in the eighth house, I don't need the fifth house to tell me what they love. Oh. If you got three benefit, in other words, if you asked me, if you said to me, look in a horoscope and tell me what does the person love, for for this guy Einstein, I'd say he loves religion, he loves career, and he loves metaphysics. The eighth, ninth, and tenth houses, they're all strong. That's what he loves. So I'm not necessarily going to go to the fifth house for that. I'm going to look at the chart and see what does a person love. This happens a lot with, with people that study law. They have a very strong Mars, Mars Mercury, very strong ninth house in Mars, and they become lawyers. But they don't enjoy it. They don't like the Marsiness of it. And I'll tell them, I'll say, well, you know, you could be a lawyer, but look, Jupiter and Moon in, in, in Cancer in the second house, you'd be much happier writing or teaching. You know what I mean? So the, so the happiness, you look in the whole chart to, to, to see the happiness, at least that's what I do. Okay, so but you were person, saying... But, 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 but if you said, is this person going to be happy? I would go straight to the fourth house and Venus. Okay. Strictly for happiness. Yeah, this is also one thing which you mentioned, that if the chart is great and wonderful, amazing, but if Venus and fourth house is not well placed or there are difficulties, then the person is never happy. John Lennon. Oh. He could be content, but happiness would be difficult. Now... There's different opinions about his horoscope. I am convinced he was born with a Virgo ascendant. Now they say he was born with a, a Pisces ascendant. I think it was, I believe it was the Virgo. And the fourth house was bad because the fourth house ruler, Jupiter, was within one or two degrees of fallen Saturn. Oh. And, um, and Venus itself was, I think, in the 12th house or in 12th house. So Venus, you know. The thing about happiness, though, you have to understand is that a person, happiness means the sweetness of life. I have an, a, an afflict, a very afflicted Venus, and my fourth house is strong, but, but it has problems. Happiness is never something that I was really going to get. Contentment from meditation, from spiritual, contentment is something that I would look for more than happiness, like being happy and bubbly all the time because my Venus is, is very afflicted. Okay. So uh, generally I had, I used to think and I had heard also you know, that the internal happiness is more of that moon thing and the fourth house and external luxury and uh, like sexuality. These things are under Venus, but you said that it is only the fourth house and Venus. So what is your opinion on moon? If the moon is afflicted, <laughs> that's like, that's terrible. No, no. <laughs> the moon is the emotional well-being. Uh -huh. So when I'm using the word Venus uh, or happiness, I'm talking about the sweetness, the happiness, uh -huh. the bubbly. You know, if the moon is afflicted, that person's always going to have emotional problems. Okay. Emotional problems. The moon and the ascendant ruler are the most important influences in a horoscope. When I do a reading, I tell the person, I'm going to do a little overview of the chart for two or three minutes, and then I'm going to go into the specifics. Once I do the overview, then I say, the most important influences in a horoscope are the moon and the first house, because they represent you. So if the moon is well-placed, well aspected that's going to give a lot of emotional comfort if the moon is poorly placed the peace of mind will be disturbed the moon 
The moon is the peace of mind, common sense, like that. It's the memory and common sense and the emotions. Moon is moon is critical. So it would be it would be hard to have a, have a very <coughs> a very afflicted moon and be comfortable. You wouldn't be comfortable. Yeah, and another thing, as you had said some time ago, that sometimes you see that the seventh house is great in the Lagna chart. But when you go to the Navamsa, you see there's opposite story there. Even I have seen many charts like that. So, I mean, have, can you share something on those lines? That's complicated. That's very complicated. There may be some cases where the person has a very good relationship. Then when they get married, it gets worse. Oh, okay. That may be in some cases. I don't have an answer for you in those cases so much. Um, I would say if either one, if either one, the natal seventh house or the Navamsha is extremely bad, you're going to have problems. doesn't matter which one it is. Okay. If either one of them has something spectacular, uh -huh. there's going to be something spectacular. Even if the other chart is bad, there will be something spectacular. You, you just have to figure they're both going to be the case. Now, something that is extremely important to tell people in our culture, when you have a mixed, mar mixed seventh house, which is very easy, you have the seventh house, you have the seventh house ruler, you have yeah. Venus, you have Venus, you have the planets opposite the seventh, opposite the moon, which makes it a seventh house. There's a million different things for marriage, right? So very often you have a person where there's something extremely bad about marriage and something good. Yes. Now, what I always tell them always is that, in fact, I had one just the other day. This lady was so scared that she would never be married because she was 30, 32 years old or something. And she had these terrible aspects for marriage, right? But Jupiter and Venus, both Jupiter and Venus, aspected the seventh house. Oh. And they were aspecting, one of them was aspecting its exaltation sign. So I said to her, look, you're definitely going to get married. You can't ignore those good aspects. Yeah. They, will, they will produce. They will produce. The bad ones will produce as well. She had definite oh. bad aspects. Now, what you have to tell the person is that the bad aspects, the bad marriage, the bad relationships must come first. They cannot come second. Why? Because if a person says to you, I had the most beautiful partner and then he died. Oh. How, is that, how is that good? That's yeah. not good. Yeah, That's yes, not good. Yes. Yes, so yes. you must have the problems first. Ah. And then the good. Now, it doesn't mean that a person couldn't have a good partner and then die. But it does mean that if that happens, the next partner is also going to be good. Oh. Because they, they've got good and they've got bad. The bad, ah. the bad must happen first. Yes. Now, you could have a person that has a bad one and another bad one and another bad one. That's possible. Oh, yeah. But, but if there's some some definite really good stuff and the bad, the bad will come first. Okay. It's very I... rare. It's very rare to find a person who says, I had a great marriage and then it ended and my next marriage was terrible. That's, oh. that's very rare. <laughs> it's usually the first one was bad, the second one was better. It's, you know what I mean? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So Einstein could marry somebody from a foreign country because okay. the, seventh, the seventh house ruler is in the ninth. Oh. Okay. Uh, but this, you see, he was using a lot of intuition based on Mars exalted in the eighth house. So a lot of psychic, a lot of intuition was coming to him. 
Whereas from Ramanujan, it was coming from God. It was coming from not the ninth house, but the twelfth house. Oh, Moksha. Okay. Moksha. And and you would worship Lakshmi. Venus is Lakshmi. And another thing I wanted to ask you here uh, that sometimes we see some charts that the and then the the person doesn't want to marry or doesn't end up getting married so do you see some specific combinations where the person doesn't want to marry i mean in my experience i have seen saturn and venus very closely linked in that case well the thing is if a person is not going to marry it's usually the case usually it's the case where nothing is aspecting the seventh house Okay. And nothing is aspecting the seventh house ruler. Okay. Then they don't have any energy. There's nothing there's no energy there. Usually. Okay. Usually. Saturn Venus just means the person's very scared or shy in love matters. You know, things like that. But it doesn't mean they won't get well, I mean, to me that that's not something that tells me they won't get married. What tells me is when there's no energy for the seventh house. There's just nothing happening. Another, make sure you look for this. Make sure you look. If the seventh house ruler is retrograde, okay, it's a choice. No. I've spoken a lot on YouTube's interviews about retrogrades. If the ruler of the third house is retrograde, it doesn't matter how artistic the person is. They may not become an artist unless they want to. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. If the seventh house rule is retrograde, they don't have to get married. And that's not an affliction. The retrograde is not an affliction. It just means, it's not bad. It just means it's their choice. Okay. It's, pass, it's passive like that. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they say that the aspect and placement of retrograde planets are very strong. So for example, they say if Saturn is afflicting a planet, but if it is retrograde and then it is afflicting, then the intensity is much more and severe. So what is your opinion on that? 